Yes, hello and welcome to the, the Tudor Bear Way YouTube channel. This is video 11. Today we're going to go over some quite serious stuff. We're looking at the potential possibility of being able to do ENT surgery such as tonsillectomy, dental uh, extractions, uh, septoplasties, anything in the upper air, airway from here upwards without endotracheal intubation. Now, the question, the, I'll, I'll tell you straight away, I think the answer is yes, but I must come forward and say this is a bit of a discussion and is based upon reports that I've just received with people using the ENT tulip and the way that they checked that this thing was safe. They, you know, to, to investigate whether one, it could be done to, you know, was it was the seal appropriate, you know, as incomplete and was there any leakage? And I think we've got some firm answers today on all of these questions. OK, so the, obviously the hows and the whys matter and the evidence. Well, OK, let's go through this um, report that I got yesterday. Um, what we've got here is um, good morning, everyone. I had an opportunity to, to use the Spirali Tulipi. Now, this person is in English and I don't think that matters in the slightest. That is a Spirali Tulipi. Basically, it is the reinforced version. So it has a metal spiral within. Uh, and that, of course, is a tulip airway. This is a preformed PVC type, and that's the reinforced metal type. I tested it on two patients during septoplasties, ENT surgery. I found it to be very successful and did not encounter any ble bleeding or leakage problems. The patients woke up very comfortably. Since they did not experience any straining, they woke up without even the slightest nasal bleeding or leakage. Now, that sounds reasonable enough, but uh, hang on. OK, so let's have a look at this. This is a standard tulip, right? So it works just like a normal tulip, but the tubes are longer and the connectors are designed to be out of the way down here on the south. So that basically keeps the access to the septoplasties, the dental, the Boyle's Davis gag. It makes that all possible by taking away the lip guard and the connector here. Now, <clears throat> this person is a military user um, and has, in fact, done tracheal resections of tulips, which we will bring to you in either case reports and, and perhaps preferably an interview with the doctor concerned personally. But basically, all right, now this is this is the important part. I tried a different method. After putting the tulip to the patient, I dropped one to two drops of fluorescein into their mouth using a flexible bronchoscope through the tulip so you know that you can do that i observed that the dye remained on the cuff portion of the balloon when i looked and that means the upper aspect when i looked into the oropharynx through the tulip there was no dye leakage i controlled the dye under normal light and blue now that's pretty good because fluorescein fluoresces beautifully in blue line the cases lasted between 9 and 120 minutes. So these are two hour operations. At the end of the procedure, I re-examined through the tulip with the flexible scope, found no blood or fluorescein dye under normal and blue light again so in the oropharynx beneath the tulip's cuff. Now that's basically suggests that not only do, can you ventilate and was a two hour, two hour operation done uh, spontaneously breathing with IPPV support with the tulip, it also didn't leak. That it didn't leak blood and it didn't leak fluorescein. OK. <clears throat> that what, what does that prove? OK, to my mind, that, that proves that there is effective use in certainly in septoplasty. It prov tulip provides a seal and that there was no leakage. Well, hang on. That means no endocrine intubation is necessary. I, but do you think endotracheal intubation really is as good as you think? Because I'm not so sure. Now, this forms a discussion. So learned people who exercise and practice in this arena, most welcome to comment on what I'm about to say. All right, let's discuss intubation. You know it kills people. So the paralysis kills people. The laryngoscopy can kill well, Let's go to paralysis. Anaphylaxis and the paralysis itself. You can't breathe. So if we can't do it for you, you're in big trouble. Laryngoscopy. Well, there's plenty of trauma. Failure is certainly a possibility, as is can't intubate, can't ventilate. OK, so proper scary stuff. 
The intubation itself, you could get laryngospasm, trauma, stenosis, post, you know that. Extubacing, again, laryngospasm, again, trauma. And you could end up in a situation post-ETT extubation that you can't ventilate. Also, you're going to need to go Goodell mask, ET tube, Goodell mask. So there is lots of transitions, induction and recovery. But look, let's go into the theory of this. You've seen this before. Two, two tubes become one tube, become two tubes. That's not particularly news. Endotracheal tubes sit in the trachea here. OK, so that is a picture of an endotracheal within the, within the trachea. But hang on, just look at this. If your tonsils are here, when you perform surgery with an ET tube, blood goes into the trachea above the level of the cords where that cuff is. I accept below the cuff there's no blood, or hopefully not, but above the cuff there's no reason why there shouldn't be. So that means that when you're performing surgery with an ET tube, you will get a pool of blood above the vocal cords or that's certainly a possibility whether it happens every time god knows but what happens next is when you let the cuff down any blood that may be there will go down the trachea okay so it's not quite as great as we think it is that's a tulip airway in its more standard sort of Goodell type uh formulation with and without headbands and here. Now, this is the one we're talking about. As you can see, the only real difference is the breathing tubes, right? So that, that this is out of the way of the surgical field. But an airtight seal also is a blood tight seal. That fluorescein investigation proved that. So we've got an airtight blood tight seal above the level of the cords. So that means you don't need to intubate. Now, the tulip works on a completely different principle, which is why it's working in this scenario. It forms an oropharyngeal circumferential seal. It is not supraglottic. It sits behind your tongue. So that is where it sits in the one tube. OK, so there we are in sight tube. All right. Isolated in the oropharynx only tip of soft palate and uvula to tip of epiglottis in its entirety. Circumferential seal. OK, let's go through the tonsils again. That's where the tonsils are. You've got a circumferential, airtight, blood tight seal where the tulip is. OK, now what happens? You get a blood pool above the level of the, of the tulip cup. All right. That means there's no blood here at all. OK. Now, that means when you get blood above the cuff, we recommend you suction before removal and you should be able to see it. That's a big difference. And there should not be any blood in the trachea. OK, and now we're going to watch an ENT tulip being used in a mannequin so you can see that it goes in just like a normal tulip and what the differences are in these breathing tubes for the surgical and the surgical access and the surgeon himself. of an oropharyngeal cuff between the soft palate and uvula and the tip of the epiglottis at the front here. That then circumferentially seals the oropharynx, giving a airtight and blood tight seal, which then means you can use the tulip for uh, oral, ENT, dental type surgery, septoplastic for an example. For a number of conditions, you can use this version. However, this is a specific um, ENT type tulip in this particular case, there's a preformed um, a plastic PVC tube. Here we have another version. This is a flexible with a metal spring within. Both are designed specific for ENT in this particular case. You insert the tulip in the normal fashion. The tube is designed to be pointing south so that it can be secured away from the um, operation if you are, for example, doing a septoplastry or something on the nose. Um, in the same situation, everything is the same except the breathing tube in itself. Once the tube is inflated, you can ventilate in a normal manner. The same situation is applicable 
the reinforced type. So you can see that this breathing tube is designed to be taken away from, if you're doing a septoplasty, a standard tulip would be here. This tube takes it right down here so that it's, the connection is out of the way. <clears throat> a round tube like this would also fit a Boyle's Davis gag for things like tonsillectomy. So as you can see, a tulip airway with its oropharyngeal cuff is airtight uh, in the oropharynx and therefore blood tight. Therefore, you have a dependable seal above the level of the cords. Now, basically, that therefore means that the tulip removes the dangers of endotracheal intubation. No paralysis, no laryngoscopy, no intubation, no extubation, no messing around with lots of devices. But there's an additional safety feature that is completely unique to the tulip that also is of maximum benefit when you have a contaminated airway like post tonsillectomy or septoplasty, because then you get fully awake self extubation, which you can't do with any other device. So imagine now you're doing a uh, tonsillectomy, you've left, you've left the tulip in place, you've suctioned, patient is still breathing, they pull it out when they have a cough reflex, all right? So self extubation, awake recovery with a cough reflex. OK, particularly useful in contaminated airways and difficult airways. But you want some evidence. You may have seen this on the YouTube on the, my YouTube channel. Um, but what it is, is a video of a person recovering. Now, just to go why just to go through why that's possible. The tulip sits in the oropharynx, which is in the glossopharyngeal nerve area. Uh, therefore, that means that you can use in semi-conscious states like a Goodell, unlike an LMA and Nigel. Glossopharyngeal induces swallowing, not a gag, not a cough, and not a vomit. Now I'm going to show you the video of a lady waking up. Um, now the video has been taken with her consent and I'm very grateful to her. You will be able to see that she pulls the tulip out and then she will cough at eight seconds and go, and then start answering questions. Any eyes, please? Yeah. You, you pull that out if you want to, Anne. That's good. Good, excellent. Oh. How'd you feel? You wide awake? Mm, yes. Now, I've got to tell you, I think her GCS is 14, slightly spurred speech, but she's answering questions. She definitely coughed. She may have swallowed, not sure. She didn't gag, she didn't vomit, and she self extubated. Now, I think you've seen self extubation and full recovery with the re return of a cough reflex, so you know that's true. Now imagine that after an ENT dental nasal surgery, difficult airway contaminated. It's of maximum value if you didn't intubate either. Now, intub basically tulip airway takes away intubation by the looks of it. You don't need paralysis. You don't need laryngoscopy, intubation, extubation or multiple airway devices. All right. You're going to get the safety of uh, self extubation and awake recovery. But there's more. If you use an ET tube, you're going to need a Goodell and a cushion face mask to pre oxygen get started. And then when the patient is asleep, you're going to use an ET tube, a laryngoscope, McGill's forceps, a throat pack, succimothonium, a syringe and a needle. Then you're going to go back to your Goodell and mask up post extubation. And then you're going to give them an ear loop, normal non cushion face mask. So you're going to take an airway in and out three times. So Goodell in, ET tube in, Goodell in and then 10 pieces of equipment. But with a tulip, you start with a non cushion face mask because you're not going to use a good delta ventilate. You then put a tulip airway in that stays in throughout until the patient pushes uh, pulls it out like you just saw. Then they go on to a non cushion ear loop face mask. So the only piece of equipment you use is um, uh, the tulip for the for the actual uh, airway intervention and the standard oxygen face mask. Um, and there's only one airway transition. That also means air, that Tulip Airway, you know, is saving nine bits of equipment. Which, of course, saves money. But hang on. There's more. Have you ever thought about this? Actually, I thought about it today. And with the endotracheal tube, we only seal and protect the trachea. That's true. 
However, there is unfortunately leakage type bleeding into the stomach. With the tulip, there was no leakage in the stomach. That's true. I hadn't even thought about that. Because she's right. You're going to get blood leaking down into the trachea after the cuff is deflated, right? So then when this comes down, the pool of blood that I demonstrated previously will go down to the trachea if there is one. But what will happen is blood will leak down into the esophagus during surgery. But with a tulip, it won't. So this, I'm afraid, is an example of how a right solution seems to provide more unexpected solutions. And this is the second time that's happened, because the first time it happened with the tulip airway, it was when I read a paper online called The Usefulness of the Tulip Airway in A Dentalus Patients. Because, of course, when you don't have any teeth, formation of a, a seal across the mouth is, is more difficult. And if you don't have any teeth, the tulip is particularly useful. So I called this guy up and I said, do you want to know something? I didn't even think about that. So something something seems to be happening with tulip airways. I recommend you try some. Uh, I also recommend that you watch the other videos on YouTube. I would appreciate like and subscribe. But the other videos will go through the various other details that and, you know, a competent airway user really needs to know before they decide to do something as adventurous as use a new airway on a human. And I accept that. But there are statistics. There are um, a number of other ways you can look at it. The website is probably the primary place because it has things like the instruction manual. But I'll see you next time.